नमस्कार प्रभु एवरीवन ऑन द डैश एंड ऑफ द डैश इन द हॉल द आउटसेट बिफोर बिगिनिंग माय प्रेजेंटेशन आई वुड लाइक टू रिमाइंड दैट टुडे इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट डे नॉट ओनली बिकॉज दिस World Hindu Congress version 3 has been inaugurated but one more thing today is the martyrdom day of guru tegh bahadur singh ji this day november 24th in 1675 Guru Tegh Bahadur ji sacrificed his life for the protection and upholding of dharma he gave up his life for the great cause of the freedom of practicing dharma by an individual the way he feels fit and the way he chooses and on behalf of all of you and all the entire hindu community i bow my head in the memory of revered guru tegh bahadur sisters and brothers hindu dharma hindu samaj hindu culture and put together all these we can say hindutva today is much talked about and hindutva is as it has been told while informing about the topic of the session a period of resurgence is taking place it has already started today there is a new awakening among hindus and also there is an increased new found interest about all that is hindutva whether it is hindu dharma culture society people history you name anything there is a new found interest and it is increasing all over the world by people who are not born as hindus also the examples of quoted are the yoga is practiced in so many countries and june 21st has been declared as the international yoga divas yoga day by the united nations ayurveda is back being practiced the sanskrit language the veda the gita bhagavad gita and many other our texts are today being studied researched and number of people are writing about it and a few years ago the newsweek magazine of united states published an article with the caption with the title we are all hindus now we are all hindus now who is declaring it is not the hindus who have been born as hindus not them but the people who are not hindus by birth but they have chose to follow hindu dharma the hindu practices hindu religion hindu yoga ayurveda etc the news we published that article and it made waves the goldberg came out with another book american vedas 
So I do not want to go into the examples of uh, these things, how there is a increased appreciation of Hindu dharma and culture. The Hindu dharma, samaj and culture have passed through the test of fire which usually any organization or the movement or uh, the society has to face. Generally, it is said that upahas, virod, and svikrt. There was apathy, ridicule, denigration, neglect, and what not. All that was Hindu was considered to be a thing to be denigrated of. The people who are to be ridiculed, a culture that should be neglected, ignored, and then a period was also there, simultaneously, of course. There was opposition, hatred, bashing. Hindus and the Hindu culture, Hindu dharma have experienced it, they have faced this also. All those things have not been over, but the thing is, the another phase has also started as Swami Vigyananand in the morning, he was telling about the acceptability, the respectability, and the visibility of uh, all that is Hindu. Today, there are many organizations, fora, associations, bodies, all over the world, in different countries, as just now, Guna Maheshwanji has uh, gave the example of Australia and New Zealand. Hindus have formed organizations, associations, and various sampradayas and their followers are also working, the temples and te tem temple goers, their associations. So these things are being experienced. The Hindus have felt the need of getting organized. When Swami Vivekananda returned after his uh, successful tour of the Western countries, when he came to Bharat, somebody asked Swamiji, it's all good, but uh, you have gave so many ideas and uh, you have shown the path to the Western world, the people there, what they should do, what they should learn from us, the Hindus. Is there anything that we have to learn from them? That came the answer by Swamiji. Yes, the organization. Hindus, it is not that uh, they do not have a history of uh, having organization. But down the lane, in the history, it was an unfortunate chapter that we lost faith. We, we lost the way, the path. And the dire need of organizing Hindus was emphasized by Swamiji and many others. And as we have seen in the planning session, the felicitation of Bharat Sevashim, the Pujani Sarasanga Chalakji, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, all these uh, was also here. So the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, or the Bharat Sevashim, Seva Sang, Ramakrishna Ashram, many started uh, not only thinking, but uh, they started organizing the Hindu society for the resurgence of the Hindu community. One thing is, uh, we all know that the organization is strength, the unity is strength. Sangatan me shakti hai. Sanghe shakti kalav yuge. Why organization is required? One is to have the strength, to deliver what we are destined to, to defend ourselves, to protect the weak who are good, to change the strong who are bad, 
to strengthen the strong who are also good and to spurn who are bad and eternally bad. Dharmakarya requires all these aspects. Strong should protect the weak, defend the weak, and see that they, they become stronger. There is a Sanskrit Subhashit Vidya Vida, Vidya Vivadaya. Dhanam Madaya, Shakti Paresham Paripidanaya, Kalasya Sado Viparita Metat, Jnanaya Dana Echa Rakshanaya. Using Vidya, the knowledge, utilization of wealth, proper use of strength, the good and the bad, they do it in different ways. The evil, the wicked, will use the knowledge for unnecessary debate, unending debate. No light, only sound. And the wicked use the wealth, dhanam madaya, for their ego satisfaction. Shakti Paresham Paripidanaya. The strength is being used by the wicked, the bad people, the evil ones, to disturb and destroy others. Whereas the good use all these three for the betterment of life, for the evolution of man. Knowledge, for the knowledge sake, that will shed light. Show the way. Wealth for dana. Those who do not have, those who are unfortunate, should have a better life. For that, the wealth has to be utilized, the dana. And the strength has to be used for protecting the weak, rakshanaya. So, sangatan me shakti hai. So, if it is for this, then that strength is useful and it will be helpful for the human society. The organizations, they have been formed in different parts of the world, as I have mentioned. The organization's success depends upon the individuals who play the role there. What is their input? How do they contribute to the organization's success? their quality, their effort, their hard work, their virtues, or the other way, the vices, ego, the selfishness, the aspirations, whether they are strengthening the organization or they are using the organization, it depends on the individuals who are there in the organization. And many organizations, they have become organizations and they have started their work, but they are not self-sufficient. They are weak. They are unable to deliver what they have planned or the, what they have dreamt of. So increasing their strength requires hard work and proper planning of the organization find a good teamwork. Not only that, I just know HOTA example has been mentioned here and we all know that networking, collaborating, cooperating with the other organizations, they are also, this is also very much required in making an organization success. Now, many organizations rarely share their good activities with others. There is a lack of communication, lack of information. And failure to disseminate information and lack of coordination that has led to hurting the 
expected resurgence. Unwilling to cope up with this has led to lack of unity also. And as far as the organizations and various associations that have been formed in different parts of the country, parts of the world, there have been some experiences which I would like to share with you, which we all know. I only remind them so that uh, we think, we contemplate over those issues. My institute, the associations, organizations, and forum in different uh, parts of the world have been on the basis of uh, language, sect, caste, subcaste, gurus, pantha, sampraday, old and new. All are Hindus. But everybody is uh, hammering on his or her organization's work. So there are Hindus who are organizing on the basis of language and all their energies are spent on that. Is it right or wrong? I am not saying that is not correct. The thing is, in this entire this diversity of organizations, the Hindu is lost. So remembering Hindu and having these various forum and association and all. So if the, that is the larger goal, the larger objective, that should not be forgotten. So that's why many a time the diversity of Hindu society has also led to disunity in many places. Hindus have a rare phenomenon something unique. In some places it happens so uh, somebody or a group of people think that uh, there are so many organizations, so we should have an umbrella organization. Okay, wonderful. So they will have umbrella organization. And a similar idea comes to the mind of somebody else also. And they also start an another umbrella organization. And there is one umbrella organization and the another umbrella organization and the third umbrella organization. And then the fourth person will say there should be a federation of these umbrella organizations. So why this happens? Hindus have this uh, unique phenomenon that they are organizing, but at the same time they are separating themselves. So this uh, we will have to think of when we come together, whether the larger goal is for, when we have an organization, whether the larger goal is forgotten. When we come together as many organizations, whether our organizational behavior, our larger dream, our day-to-day -day activities, whether they are in sync with the others, whether they are, there is a mutual problem, contradictiousness, this we have to work out and iron out. Otherwise, we are organizing, but we are disuniting. So this uh, issue has came up in uh, many countries. That's what our workers have, our karyakartas have experienced. And there is another phenomenon that is organizations uh, before making any impact get split and the, the associations and the organizations they get divided why again because of the ego differences absence of teamwork selfishness so these are traits of the people who have come to make an impact through an organization, they have lost the path, they have lost the way. Then there are some other observations. 
which uh, we have to address in the future so that the resurgence of uh, Hindu society takes place. It gets fashioned, it gets shaped. There are language organizations in many countries. Marathi is in Kannada, Telugu, etc., etc., many. The second generation, third generation youngsters are unable to relate with the language and they are not speaking the language. So what will happen? Then there is another thing. Nowadays it is getting reduced, but still the remnants of that are uh, disturbing. That is the impact of the secularization of Indian polity has led to secular approach to the so-called secular approach, the pseudo-secular approach in those associations and organizations. To the extent of that, even the festivals, Hindu festivals, we have Deepavali or Ganesh Puja or many other things. We want to celebrate it in a different fashion so that the religious fact is not there. So let us not put in, let us not bring religion into that. So we want to celebrate festivals in a Western style. So we want to secularize. So that has happened in uh, many cases. Now, there are organizations and forums in Bharat. There are linguistic states. So we have the linguistic organizations. Then the linguistic state is divided into two states in Bharat. Then the people there also get into two states. And there will be forming two organizations again immediately. So whatever happens in Bharat will have its echo, its reflection there. So we are organizing, but we are again getting disunited. <laughs> this is what is happening. Then there are uh, sectarian religious leadership, unfortunately. Neither not allowing the members of the organization to interact with others so that we want to safeguard our flock or poaching takes place. You know what is poaching. So in order to increase the my flock, poaching from others. So that uh, again results in mutual animosity. So we are organizing, but we are getting disunited. So this is a contradiction that we are experiencing in different parts of the world. Then there is misunderstanding and misinterpretation of the Hindu Dharma, Sanskriti, etc. by our own organizations. The children are unable to understand. The next generation, they cannot be answered. Their questions are not properly answered. Now there are uh, absence of books that are uh, about uh, Hindu religion, Hindu dharma, Hindu samskriti, Hindu itihas, Hindu history, etc. in libraries and in the bookstores. After 9-11 incident in America, in many stores in bookstores in America, there are books on various faiths, religions, Islam, Christianity, many others. But our friends and many academicians, they found that the books on Hindus, Hindu history, Hindu culture, they were missing. There was no proper book. It was a, a newfound interest in understanding the religion, culture, etc. in American society after the 9-11, but the Books about Hindus not found. Now, another thing is the uh, challenges practicing uh, Hindu rituals and Hindu dharma in many countries. There are problems. So I need not mention the names of the countries. There is a problem to practice these Hindu rituals and Hindu dharma. Then there is a, another serious thing that is a absence of 
culturally based counseling see in hindu society saints sages astrologers temples families they have taken care of the psychological needs of the hindu persons men and women of different age groups it is not that always uh, it is the medicine and the medical health care that has taken care of the therapeutic cure the psychological counseling that is very much required in the present day in current times in various parts of the country, among hindus particularly the younger ones but where they have to go Little Hindu organizations can cater to the need of this thing. We have to think over. Then there are from the other side. Time is up. Now, about uh, three, four other important uh, threats and challenges which we all know. I only mention them: the proletarization act activity, the conversion in many countries, the suppression of human rights of Hindus. hindutva in academia has become very the condition of uh, or the presence of hindutva in academic circles is not up to the mark it's not having the required impact department of hindu studies geeta veda studies the bharatiya language departments zulu of south africa can have a department in many universities in the western world but the indian bharatiya language departments are not there presence in media is now slowly increasing because of the political situation in bharat effective political voice in many countries so this is the long list of challenges for the hindu organizations that's why strengthening of hindu organizations is the need of the hour what we can do one that is the hindu organizations will have to think of sharing information coordinating cooperating and collaborating among themselves better resource management of theirs and avoid duplication the one is doing the other is doing the third thing that the both are uh, have become successful why don't i become successful so the third also has the same thing so this uh, duplication will lead us nowhere so organizations will have to have these strict rules among themselves so that uh, if there is a better network better coordination then we can avoid the duplication then the second thing is uh, empowering the karyakartas of the organization better training modules thought wise intellectually we have to empower them and then the organizational behavior has to be inculcated the teamwork the planning division of labor the better organizational behavior of the each organization will definitely yield required results we all know and the third thing is address the youth the children the next generation their language their understanding of technology their understanding of life and its goals their questions have to be answered all these things are very crucial in order to address the issue of hindu resurgence in future that's why i feel these uh, issues have to be taken up with utmost urgency and with all these things one more uh, thing that uh, i would like to emphasize is the hindu society it's very the great and noble ideals of hindu society of sudaiva kutumbakam tyag and seva integral approach to man machine environmental and lifestyle the sustainable development all these great ideas are there hindu society hindutva hindu culture have contributed immensely to these areas but if uh, these things have to be 
practiced, implemented, make an impact on humanity, then the strong organization with reinvigorated strength, power, they are required to make the Hindu communities better community, wealth-wise, knowledge-wise, behavior-wise, and organization-wise. So that is required. That's why what has been told in the morning session and in the previous Congress also, that is working together separately has to be practiced, has to be enjoyed. So that's why reinvigorating the Hindu organizational strength for catapulting the Hindu resurgence is the need of the hour. For that, there has to be a relook towards our own organizations and there has to be certain agenda to address the challenges. So these are the points that I wanted to make as a presentation before you. Namaskar, Danyavad.